How's it going guys? My name is Dom and in this video um, we're going to be creating this navigation bar right here using plain HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Um, there is no need for any sort of external library to achieve this navigation bar. Aside from the icons themselves which are Google's material icons. So they're free, they're open source and they look good. So to actually get them you go to um, material.io forward slash tools forward slash icons and you can go here and you can pick whatever icons you like and to actually use them on your web page um, you go to this page right here and just copy and paste this link um, to the head of your web page or your HTML file. So I'll leave a link in the description to this page right here. And I've also made a video on the material icons themselves if you want to check that out. Okay, so um, for this blank HTML file, we're going to begin work on this one. And it looks like this right now within my editor. You can see here I've included um, the icons in the head section of my HTML file. Alright, so let's begin on the HTML for the navigation bar. So down here, we can begin by creating a wrapper or a container for the navigation bar. So we can make a new div with a class of navbar and this will contain only um, each one of our four links. So we can say A with our href of being a hash, that way we can click on it and it goes nowhere. Um, we're going to give it a class of navbar navbar underscore link. So I'm using the two underscores here because I'm going to be using BEM block element modifier CSS naming convention. You can of course name these however you like but I'm using BEM for this video. Alright so inside here you're going to specify of course um, the link text so we can say home for example. But for the actual icon we're going to want to put this to the left of the text. So we can say span dot material icons. Okay, so this is the syntax or the way you use material icons. And inside the span tag, you specify the name of the icon you want to use. So for example, I'm going to put home inside there. And if we check the website and scroll down a bit more, um, we can see here that I've got home. So I'm going to be using this icon, which I've put home, that text right there, inside um, my page. So just like that. So you can use I, you can use span, um, whatever you like. But basically, uh, you'll need an inline um, HTML or any sort of HTML tag with a class of material icons. Okay, cool. So let's go back inside the text editor and just copy and paste this three more times. We can have uh, something like photos. We can have uh, forum and logout. So the icons for photos is going to be photo underscore library. Um, the icon name for forum is going to be question underscore answer. Okay, and for logout, it's going to be exit to app. Okay, so I can save this, refresh the browser, and we have this result right here. So all of the icons have been rendered successfully. So now let's, of course, add the CSS to make the navigation bar into a navigation bar. So back inside here, let's first target the navbar class. So in the CSS, let's say navbar, and this will be positioned um, fixed. So we can say position and then fixed. This ensures that as you scroll down the page, um, the, uh, the navbar is going to be still fixed on top of everything else as you scroll. Okay. And we're going to give it a top of zero and a left of zero. This means it's going to be positioned in the top left corner of the web page or the web browser window. All right. We're going to give it a width of 200 px, a height of 100%. That just means fill up the entire height of the browser window. Um, a background of some sort of decode green. So we can do two zeros, nine, eight, seven, nine. Um, that should be the color of my logo and my channel. Um, we can say border right of 2px solid and then a darker version of the background color. That'll be 8c71. All right. A box shadow of 0010px, 5px. 
and a 25% opaque black, the 0.25 right there. Um, and that'll be it for now for the navigation bar. Um, later on, we can actually go ahead and add things like opacity and transitions for opening and closing um, the nav bar. But for now, this will do. So I can save this and refresh the browser. And we have this right here. So looking pretty good so far. All right, let's now style the navigation links. So back inside here, of course, let's target the navbar underscore link class. And we're going to begin by having a display of flex. This ensures that we can uh, successfully align our content, so the icons and the text, vertically. All right. So if I combine this with align item center, this ensures that everything is going to be centered vertically. So I can save this and refresh, and we should see it working right there. So now we can see that, of course, um, the text and the link, sorry, the uh, the text and the icon is centered um, pretty evenly vertically. All right. Um, we can go ahead now and add a few more classes or uh, properties. So we can say background as being again a green color. This is the same as the border right of the navbar. A color of white. Okay. Um, some padding. We can just say 12 pixels. Looks quite nice, I think. A text decoration of none to remove the underline by default on anchor tags. A font weight of bold. A font size of 85% uh, of the root element font size. So basically, uh, 85% of 16px in most browsers. A border bottom of 1px, solid, and then uh, I believe it's the same color as this one right here, the background of the uh, navigation bar. So I can save this and refresh. We have this right here. So looking pretty good so far. Okay, basically it's almost good to go. Um, so let's add the margin between the icon and the text. So that's quite straightforward. We're just going to target the material icons class. So we can say navbar underscore link dot material icons. We can say margin right of the same pixels we used for the padding. Save this and refresh. We have this right here. All right, so for um, the effect of being active, so when you click on the link, we want the background color to go a bit darker, just for some user feedback that they've actually clicked on the link. All right, so we can do that quite easily by adding this right here. We can say navbar link, then use the active pseudo class here, so colon active, and we can say background, and once again, a darker green, so 007, D65 will do that just fine. I can save this, refresh, click and hold, and we get that right there. So that is all for the CSS for now. We're going to, of course, add more styles later on to achieve this open and closing effect. But for now, that is all. In fact, we're going to do that right now. Sorry, guys. So let's go inside, of course, the HTML file and add the JavaScript to, of course, make it so you can open and close the navigation bar. All right, so um, just for simple example or demonstration, this will be that button on the right side to say open and close nav. So we can say button, um, we can say style, float to the right, okay, so I actually see it. This will be, you know, of course, open and close nav. And when it gets clicked on, we're gonna run a JavaScript function. This will be called toggle nav, and the function is going to be very, very simple, okay? One line. So inside here, the JavaScript, let's define that function, toggle nav. It's going to do one thing. It's going to toggle a class on the nav bar, all right? So we're going to say document.query selector. We're going to select the first um, element with a nav bar class. So basically, we're going to target this nav bar right here. I'm going to say class list dot toggle and then navbar dash dash open. So this toggle method basically just says we're going to toggle this navbar open class on the navigation bar. So if you click on this when the page loads up, it's basically going to be adding this class to the navbar just like that. 
If you click it again, it's going to remove it and put it back to that. Okay, so when the page loads up, it's going to be closed by default. And this class right here can be targeted in CSS to, of course, open or close the navigation bar. So when the nav bar is open, we want the left to be zero and the opacity to be one. When it's closed, we're going to make the left to be negative 200 px. So basically, 200 px to the left off screen. The same width as sorry, yeah, the same percentage or the same unit or value as the width. Okay, and the opacity is going to be of course zero. All right, so I can save this and refresh the browser. It is now invisible. Um, of course, if I was to click on this button, the class gets added here, and of course, the navbar shows. So, to make the transition effect happen, that's really straightforward. Just go inside the CSS and say transition on the navbar class. Transition left 0.25 seconds, ease in, ease out. Okay, and do the same thing for the. Um, for the opacity so opacity and use the same settings here basically it just means yeah it's going to take a quarter of a second to open and close the navbar i can save this and refresh and we have here our final result i'll click on the button of course it opens up press it again and it closes and that is how you can create this uh, html um, navigation bar from scratch using html css and javascript Thanks for watching and I will see you later.